Greetings Legionnaires, wanted to stop by for just a second and give you my initial impressions on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, a game I've been playing all weekend and I can very easily say that I've only barely scratched the surface. But let's just talk about this game franchise for just a moment here. So Super Smash Bros. has been a long running series of games for me that I have just adored. It's my favorite game on N64, Melee was incredible, I played a lot of Brawl, I really enjoyed that too, I enjoyed making levels in Brawl a lot, and the look of some of the characters. Fox looks horrible in Melee, but looks way better in Brawl, but anyway, I wasn't really into it on a technical level, so a lot of people still love Melee, but I enjoyed Brawl, I still love the first one. Played a little bit of the one on Wii U, but I didn't own a Wii U, so this is kind of me getting back into the franchise in a big way, and oh my goodness, there is just so much to talk about. So, you know, it's it's so hard to even comprehend this game, a game that starts, you know, you off with just kind of your original roster of fighters, the original eight, and that is everybody, and I've got them on my wall over here, I, I just, just for memory's sake, so, but to look at them, Mario, Donkey Kong, Link, Samus, Yoshi, Kirby, Fox, and Pikachu, but then, you know, you get Ness, Luigi, Captain Falcon, and Jigglypuff after a while as well. But this is just like, that's the first roster. And that's who you start off with if you want to jump right into Smash. You get that first eight, not those original, like, you don't get those secret characters, those four, not yet. To unlock those characters, and I'm sure there are other ways to unlock characters too, but you have to play Spirits Mode, or the World of Light Mode. Kind of has you going around with... The beginning with Kirby here, after a lot of people maybe saw this intro. But uh, everybody gets taken out. All the Smash characters have been destroyed by Galeem, this kind of being of light and all these master hands. And they all try to fight them, but they lose pretty quickly, which is a very cool, crazy concept to me. Because it's come a long way from the very first Super Smash Brothers, where they were all just like action figures that you as the master hand, or maybe that was you as the master hand, would like pick them up and fight them and stuff. Anyway... Uh, so Kirby survives, and now he has to kind of go around the world and bring everybody out of it and fight like their evil doppelgangers and then kind of free them that way. So you go around on this big kind of game board fighting various um, characters, but also various like status ailments, various things that you get power, they get power, different things that alter the game. Like sometimes it'll just like flip the screen for some of these things, or maybe the ground will be like a sleep zone. So if you step in it, you'll fall asleep, but the computer won't. Uh, but along the way, you unlock other characters, kind of finding the ones, hopefully, that you have more of a preference for. Uh, I've kind of leaned into Marth, my old days as Marth on Melee. I remember not being sure about these Fire Emblem characters back in Melee when I was younger, but falling in love with Marth, and uh, kind of using him a ton. But then I got Fox, and Fox is kind of an old main of mine, so it was good to see him. Anyway, as you go through the game, you unlock these characters, but you also unlock various spirits to equip to you as well that give you different boosts to your attack, defense... Uh, grab ability and stuff, and then also just kind of bonuses, like starting um, every you know fight with a sword, a beam sword, which is great, um, or something like that, or just starting it with like you know another held item or other benefits, like you might be able to have more throw power or launching capabilities. And then on top of that, you get skill points as you go through the game, and you can allocate those to various skill trees to up your attack damage or up like the chance, like if you're shielding, you'll get health back. You know, or if you shield at the perfect time, it'll, nothing will happen. It's a lot of like little things to just add on to this. So the world of light mode, hyper extensive. That's where I've spent most of my time because I want to unlock these characters. So I've done a few of these kind of you know things on the side, but primarily this is where the game kind of is home for the beginning. So think of it kind of like Call of Duty, and that you kind of have like your campaign, or used to be Call of Duty, your campaign, and then you go into the multiplayer. But this campaign is not just like, oh, it's like eight hours and then you're done. I've been playing for a long time, and I've been beating my head against a lot of things because some of these, you know, um, fights, you're just like, oh, you're under-leveled for it because you can see your power, like, level, quote-unquote, versus theirs, which doesn't always make or break the fight. Sometimes you can beat things on a technicality, like you might get lucky with a launch or they might fall off and they might not be able to grab the ledge and you can win that way. There's one in particular that took me a very long time to do, and you don't have to beat your head against this stuff because you can go around to other little fights on the board and kind of clear up other maps, kind of clear the fog or the clouds away to go to other areas. But I fought it and fought and fought it. 
and after it, what I was um, given was this ability that allows my um, smash meter to charge faster. So that means that in a lot of my fights now going forward, my smash meter comes up really quickly. And I think that's new for this game, is that your smash meter just builds over time. It's no longer a smash orb, or at least I haven't... The only one I've seen is just a bomb. <laughs> so uh, I think the smash orbs might still be in there, but they also have ones that are bombs, because I was fighting against... Um, somebody and there are a couple of people and there's like tons of bombs in this level different types of bombs all these different types of bombs as Kirby and uh, to win the match I grabbed one of these little ones where it was like you hold it above your head and then it explodes but one of them was a smash orb and I was like, oh I'll hit that and then it blew me up and I'm like oh that sucked but you know filling that up over time and with Marth it's really great because his is just he dashes across the stage and if he hits anyone he basically does like a fire emblem crit so you see their health bar quote unquote like a fire emblem health bar and they take a lot of damage and it launches them pretty far usually so that's pretty good but yeah so I've been kind of cutting through all of that and it's been really fun kind of wacky because sometimes you'll like I said you'll beat your head against something or you'll be just about leveled with somebody else or you might have the advantage versus them because different typing comes into play, something kind of Pokemon, in that if like fire beats water, in this one it's like defense beats attack, so it might be like, you might have a blue stat, or like you might have a blue spirit equipped, and they'll have like a red one and you'll beat that, or vice versa, I don't remember exactly. Those don't really completely matter as much, I'm sure, on a very small technical level they do, but for me, I've just kind of been powering through a lot of these things and just keep going and going and going. And that is how you unlock the other characters, because you will find them out in the world and you have to beat them, and then when you do, they join your party. So this is really nice because you can kind of figure out which ones you want to go after. In the beginning, at least for me, it kind of came down to three you could choose from, and then the other two got blocked off, and you can only go back to them after you beat kind of one of the big bads of the area. So I think it was between Marth, Sheik, and Villager for me. And then once I picked Marth and got him on the team, I'm pretty sure it was him, then I could go back and get Sheik and Villager now. And in order to beat the big bad of the area, I had to go into like a separate mini dungeon, which was a bunch of fire, and it was a scary castle, and I was thinking, hmm, I wonder who could be the big bad guy here. And of course, it's the one and only Bowser. But guess what? This isn't just your straight up regular fight. No, it's not just one-on-one -on -one with regular, you know, Bowser in an arena. No, he transforms into Giga Bowser. He is a boss for this game. And you have to fight him and you have to kind of whittle away his health bar. And they have that and they do throw in stamina battles sometimes too, which means that you start off with actual health points, HP. Um, so you have to be careful when you get into a match because sometimes you might be starting with that and you can't take as many hits as you might think you can. So keep that in mind. But anyway, Fighting Bowser, it kind of reminded me a little bit of some of these hardware games I've been playing lately where I couldn't just keep playing Smash the same way I do. And a lot of these fights you get thrown into do that. They kind of say, hey, you have to think about, you know, playing this in a different way. You can't just over A for days. You know, you just can't smash and do your best attack all the time and win every fight. It does work when you've over leveled, it seems like, or when you're kind of fighting somebody that does seem a bunch or a bit weaker than you are, which is cool. Again, I don't I don't know exactly the difference and like if my attack power is way higher than theirs or whatever. But you can definitely feel it when you're fighting against uh, these bosses and when you're fighting against an opponent that has defense up and you hit them three times and it does like 24% on their, you know, smash meter or as much damage as they've taken and they hit you once and it does like 30 and you're like, oh gosh. So you have to really think about this. Uh, so it took me a few tries with Giga Bowser, but I finally beat him, finally got Bowser and unlocked that area, which was great. And I'm excited to play as Bowser because he's looking really cool. And between him and Donkey Kong, one thing I've noticed with both of their up Bs, for example, this might have been in Wii U, I don't remember, but like uh, for up B on Donkey Kong, he does the kind of helicopter spin. When he's standing on the ground now in this one, he kind of does like an angled version of it, which is really cool when you're on the ground. He kind of can catch someone in it and smash him a bunch. And Bowser, instead of kind of going horizontal, he goes vertical with his up B as he spins, which is kind of different, and I like it as well. Uh, and there's also one more person to unlock in this area. I was like, who could this be? And of course, spoiler alert, it's Peach. It's Peach here. <laughs> She's there. So if you're looking for Bowser and Peach, they're at this dark castle, kind of, I want to say near the beginning-ish of all this, but I'm not exactly sure. Basically, what I'm trying to say, though, is that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has so much to unlock. I've been unlocking music, I've been unlocking a bunch of different things as I go through this game mode specifically. And I know there's just going to be way more. I'm sure there's like target practice. I'm sure there's all this other stuff. The game looks incredible. All the characters so far have looked really cool. I've seen a lot of them. Ridley, King K. Rool, 
some of the new ones, uh, and they just really just, oh my gosh, they're so amazing. And the game feels great. I am also playing with the Joy-Con set up like in the controller format, so it works out pretty well. I still think this game would probably be best with a GameCube controller, so I'm still probably going to get that dongle attachment for it because I kind of want to do that. That's how old school Smash works. So I'll probably end up doing that. Um, but yeah, basically what I have to say is this. If you own a Nintendo Switch and you are looking for an end-all be-all game, a game that will give you hours and hours and hours of fun and lots to do, I can't recommend this game highly enough. I can't imagine what this is like, even with friends, because I'm going to get online, I'm going to do all this stuff too, so I can't speak to the online capability yet. But Smash Brothers has always been one of my favorite franchises, and I'm glad to see that they really take this seriously and have added so much to this game. It is nuts. Also, it should be noted that if you do purchase this game online, um, or if you would have pre-ordered it, you'll get access to Piranha Plant down the road. Uh, if you do get a physical copy of it, though, you'll have to register it um, online, and then you'll get access to him for free. He's the first of the five DLC, or the six DLC fighters, I believe. Because he's number 75, and then there's still five more to come. And the next one that's coming down the line, believe it or not, Joker from Persona. Oh my goodness. Uh, like, that is insane to me. I'm like, I'll pick that up, thank you. So... Yeah, uh, but I love it. Feels good. Game looks great. Uh, the music is wonderful. Uh, just the characters just like pop off the screen, and it's just such a jolly game, and they really took it seriously, and I just can't wait to get more into it. So, yeah, there is my recommendation for it. Uh, I It's hard for me to find something I don't like about it right now, honestly, because it just, it's kind of, it hits everything that you'd want in this type of title. So, but maybe that'll change. Uh, so keep it locked on the podcast, where I'll probably talk about it at length uh, a little bit more. But either way, uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope this gave you a little more information. If you have any specific questions, leave them in the comments here, or you can tweet me at JimmyGood013 over on Twitter anytime. Let me know who your favorite Smash character is, the least favorite Smash character, or who you might want in the DLC. I made a video about that. You should check it out. It's just for fun. It's not serious, like super duper serious. A lot of those characters were assist trophies, but with the announcement of Joker, I just feel like anything's possible right now. Anyway, thank you guys for dropping by. If you want to support us, consider checking out our Spreadshirt or donating to us over on Patreon.com slash Critical Reviews. Thanks so much for dropping by, and just remember to adapt and overcome.